82-year-old is there. Never once have we called on you and you simply said, I'm sorry, I'm too busy. But you always show up. You're right on time. And I thank you for that. For your goodness, your power. You are our everything. Now, you can have a lot of things, 
but if you don't have him, you're in a mess. Would you agree with that? You got a lot of faith, but if you don't have him, you're in a mess. Amen. Well, we're going to give you an opportunity to get up and get tired in your offering today. Let me just say to our visitors, we do have visitors here today that when service is over with, uh, if you'd like to come right up here to the front, we've got some coffee cups with our names on them. New beginnings, we'd like to give one of those to you. Just, just, just a little token of simply saying that we're glad that you visit us with us today. Also, if you're brand new here today, uh, unless the Lord speaks to your heart, I'm not going to overrule Him, but if He uh, speaks to your heart and says He wants you to give something, fine. If not, we'd rather you keep your money in your pocket today and let us take you out to eat, okay? Uh, I, I really would rather you leave saying, I can't believe that the preacher told me not to give today. That'll blow their minds, you know. And so, uh, but you home folk, you home folk that are here, we need your help. And uh, not only need your help, but you need God's help. And when you give, the Bible says it shall be given to you. Good pleasure, press down, shake together, and running over. I love the running over part. <laughs> Amen. Father, thank you for this time. That you have given to us to come to this place. To be able to worship you freely. We still live in a place called America. Where we are free to worship you. So we do that this morning. We do it in song. We do it in fellowship. We do it in word. And now we're going to do it in giving. We're going to worship you with our gifts. We love you. We appreciate you. Bless those who come now. Bless them now. And bless them good. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For all of our visitors and for those that have been around a long time, we don't come and get it. We ask you to come and find it. God bless you as you come today.
dealt with a topic uh, <coughs> entitled, You Don't Have to Be That Special for God to Use You. And I don't know about y'all, but I, that, that meant a lot to me. I wonder if there's anybody in here that when you were growing up, you were the least likely to succeed. <laughs> and yet God chose to use you. Isn't that amazing? He chose to use you. Turn around somebody and say, He's using me. Whether you like it or not. Alright, He chose to use you. That's amazing. Absolutely incredible. This week, we're going to deal with a new topic, kind of hinged on the old topic. And that's this. Don't look to be so popular if you're following Christ. Well, that's a road down the river. I came in to be encouraged, and he's telling me I'm going to get squashed. No, I'm not. We're going to, we're going to encourage you while we're going through all of this. I want you to go again, like I said, John's Gospel, chapter 15, and go to verse number uh, 16. We read it last week, we're going to read it again. This last Wednesday night was a was a superior Wednesday night downstairs. I heard it's also very good upstairs. If you're not going to church on Wednesday nights, you need to come check this place out. we got things for all age groups, and uh, they are enjoying it. Downstairs, I do the, uh, uh, like, 19 or 20 through about 35 or 40, we got adults. And it was an absolute marvelous night. And if you aren't doing anything, you're in that age group, we're asking you to come. If you're not, my dad does a service upstairs, and we have a teenage group. Teenagers, just because Joshua left doesn't mean we don't have a youth group, all right? So we've got a lot of things that are going on. But we dealt with that uh, last week. Let me read a little bit, and let's, let's try to take our time. If I don't finish it today, it's fine. We'll deal with it again next week. But I want to talk to you a little bit today. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse number 16. Here's what it says. You didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you. You did not choose me. I chose you. Now, you have to understand what he's saying. The creator of the universe, God, Yahweh, the I am that I am, which simply means I do all things. I am to you all things whenever you need me to be, always. That God, that God says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. In spite of yourself, I picked you out for a great work. How does that make you feel? Awesome, special, huh? Amazing. How else? Blessed. How else? Love. How else? Huh? Privileged. What else? Powerful. Powerful. What else? Strong. What else? Huh? Grateful. What else? Special. Special. Again. Somebody, somebody on Wednesday night said this. I love this. They said, I feel protected. Oh, Who I like that one. Feel I like that one. My grandpa, I, I told about this. My grandpa, my mom's dad. How many guys remember the times when you were growing up? Back when I was growing up, they had pea shooters. Anybody remember those? I mean, you actually went to the store and you bought this little bag that had peas and a little straw, about like that. How many remember? Raise your hand. I, I, I love those things, man. You just, you just shoot people all day all day long. And then try to hide like you didn't do it, right? Well, my grandpa, he was one tough cookie. My grandpa was a wrestler. When they would come to town, they would have these sporting events. They have like a circus or whatever that would come. And the circus always had their strong man. So they'd come to town, they'd set up a ring, and they would ask the guy in the local town that was the strongest or the, or the, the, the giftest, whatever you want to call him, if they could take the strong man. My grandpa was the guy that would get in the ring and make the guys cry. I mean, he, that was him. He was my hero. I love that guy. He could whip about anybody. I made a mistake when I used to think I could box. One day I walked up my grandpa. So help me God. True story. I walked up my grandpa. T.G. Lewis. I said, come on, grandpa. Come on. Come on. Now we're going to get him. He's no man. Come on, grandpa. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. And before I could blink, he hit me on this side of the face. Someone said, you ever do that again? I said, you fool. <laughs> Never did I do that again. But I did that piece of bill, and we go down the side of the road on this particular town, and I moved my grandpa on the other side, there would be somebody walking, and I knew what I wanted to do, but I wanted to shoot him. I said, I shoot him. But he was bigger than I was, so I looked at my grandpa, and I'd say, can you whip him? <laughs> and grandpa would tell me one or two 
things. Number one, shoot him. <laughs> now, when my grandpa said shoot him, there was nothing holding me back. Because I didn't care how big the dude was, I knew he had to go through grandpa before he got me. Number one, I didn't think he could go through grandpa. And number two, I knew this, grandpa could at least hold him up long enough to where I could get away. <laughs> But there's nothing that grandpa said once in a while. Take the pig and the pig shooter. And just keep on walking. <laughs> See, as long as you know somebody is there to protect you, you can do all right. He said, you didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you. My dad, our spell group Friday night, he said about that I hadn't thought about it. I thought it was really cool. I said, how does it make everybody feel? And he said, surprise. Well, I like that one. Surprised that he actually chose me. I can see him choosing you. You're good looking. I can see him choosing you. You're talented. But choosing me? What are you, desperate, God? <laughs> okay. All right, so let, let's go on. I, I'm running out of time. I'm talking too long. Uh, you didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you. And I put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't be spoiled, as fruit bears. Whatever you ask, the Father in relation to me, he gives it to you. But remember, now you got to get this. Remember the root command. Love one another. Say that. Say love one another. Love one another. Say, repeat this after me. That means, that means I got to love everybody. I gotta love everybody. You know, if, I'm, if, I'm like <laughs> if you find the godless world is hating you, remember it got to start hating me. Thank you, God. If you live on the world's terms, the world would love you as its own. But since I picked you, and you live on God's terms, and no longer the world's terms, the world is going to hate you. When that happens, remember this. Servants don't get better treatment than the masters. What he's saying is this. They hated me, they're going to hate you. If they pick on me, they're going to pick on you. If they beat on me, they will certainly beat on you. This is encouraging, isn't it? If they did what I told them, then they would, they would do what you tell them. They are going to do all things to you because of the way they treated me. They don't know the one who sent me. If I hadn't told them in plain language, it wouldn't have been so bad. As it is, they have no excuse. Hate me, you hate my father. It's all the same. If I hadn't done what I'd done among them, works no one had ever done, they wouldn't be to blame. But they saw God's signs, and they hated anyway, both me and the Father. Interesting. They have verified the truth of their own scriptures, where it is written, they hated me for no good reason. When the friend I plan to send, the Holy Spirit, when the friend I plan to send to you from the Father comes, the Spirit of truth issuing from the Father, he will confirm everything about me. You too, from your side, must give your confirming evidence since you are in this with me from the start. Chapter 16. I told you these things to prepare you for rough times ahead. Again, thank you, Jesus. At least he's saying you're going to get killed. Hallelujah. I told you these things to prepare you for rough times ahead. They are going to throw you out of many places. They're even going to, there's even going to come a time when anyone who kills you will think he's doing God a favor. They will do these things because they never really understood the Father. I told you these things so that when the time comes and they start in on you, you'll be well warned and ready for them. I didn't tell you this earlier because I was with you every day. But now on my way to the one who sent me, not one of you have asked. Where are you going? Instead, the longer I talk, the sadder you become. So let me say it again. The truth, it's better for you that I leave. If I don't leave, the friend, the Holy Spirit, won't come. But if I go, I will send him to you. Don't look to be so popular if you are a Christ follower. Before we pray, let me read this to you. I thought this was interesting. A, a, a trio of old veterans were bragging about the heroic exploits of their ancestors one afternoon down at the BMW Hall. My great-grandfather, age 13, one declared proudly was a drummer boy at Shiloh Hill. Mine boasted another went down with Custer at the Battle of Little Bighorn. A third veteran said, I'm the only soldier in my family, but if my great-grandfather was alive today, he'd be the most famous man in the world. Really? 
Why? The friends wanted to know. And the man replied, because if he was alive today, he would be 165 years old. <laughs> How many of you wish you could pop again? <clears throat> the answer is all of you, you still want to admit it. I understand that. I remember the high school days, some of you remember those. Uh, I remember the high school days when you dressed a certain way, you acted a certain way, you put your hair in a certain way. This last week, my son, he's so kind to me, Jeremiah. He walked up to me and said, hey, I seen that old picture of you when you were a kid. I said, yeah. He said, your hair, boy, it sure was funny, guys. <laughs> I had to remind him that back in them days, it was cool to wear hair like that. It was long, and it looked good. I mean, you dressed, you dressed wild back then. How many guys remember all the polyester stuff? How many guys remember those? We, we wear those lapels, and we wear them on the outside, and they were like this long. You guys remember that? All polyester. How about leisure suits? Woo! How about bell bottoms? Bell bottoms. And the bigger the bell, the better. Remember that? And if you had somebody that would do it, you actually would cut out pieces of the bell on the sides, add material to it to make the bill belt bigger. And then you would walk through the water and get the bottom of the wet so that when you walk, man, everybody heard you coming. It was true. You know, we, we make fun of a lot of girls nowadays because of their, their pants. They're very tight, you know. And, and, and I'll make a comment like, let me paint them on today. Let me tell you something. In the 70s, we painted them on. No, it's not a good visual. I understand. <laughs> we want to be accepted. We want to be in the in crowd. If you have a talent, make it bust it loose. Back then, it was Saturday Night Rock, Saturday Night Fever. It was, it was disco, baby. <laughs> Ain't no bump and grind. It was the disco lights. Boom, boom, boom. They were everywhere. Some of you don't remember that. Some of you do. As I look out here today, I see that most of us made it through those high school years rather, well, unscathed. Most of us really desire to be money. We desire to be on top. If you don't really think you do, why don't you let me ask you a couple questions. Have you ever been up for an award? You were nominated for a particular award. And they started calling out the names. Did you or did you not? You don't have to answer it. Did you or did you not secretly hope they were going to call your name? When they didn't, you just, <laughs> no big deal. And on the inside, you're going, that's going to say names. <laughs> have you ever attended a social event where you wish the people actually wanted to be with you? How about this one? Have you ever went to a social event and wanted people to say, that's my friend to you, instead of you saying, oh yeah, I know them, they're my friend. Or just once, wouldn't you like to be the guy to hit the game when you're home, right? <laughs> wouldn't you like to be the woman that records a smash hit single? I mean, all of us at one time or another, we like being on top. We like feeling appreciated. Some of you guys even like to be adored. <laughs> I tell Lisa that all the time. Adore me. No, I, and she does. I'm, I'm adored. So anyway, Jesus, Jesus addresses the situation that we're talking about. He addresses the situation of popularity. We're going to take a look at it. We're going to pray first, and we're going to get down and do some work. All right? Here we go. Father, first of all, thank you for this time that you've given us. I just simply ask you one of the witness today. Thank you, Lord, for what Lisa has done in presenting the gospel for music today. Brought us to the throne of God. Now simply I ask you, O oh God, to be with me as I deliver to your people your word. Help me do what I need to do, say what I need to say, in order that your word may change lives today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 First thing that Jesus talks about is, he, he makes a statement and he says, Don't be surprised by persecution. And write some down, write that down. Don't be surprised at persecution. If you follow Christ, there are people that are not going to like you. Christians must expect persecution from a world that hates us. Now here's what you really have to understand. Don't take that so personal. 
It's not that they hate you. It's that they hate the one that you represent. We'll get into that in a little bit longer, a little bit more. John chapter 15, 18, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Our need, now you've got to get this, our need for love and acceptance will not be met by an unbelieving world. Let me say it again. Our need for love and acceptance will not be met by an unbelieving world. That love and that acceptance is going to be met by the body of Christ, by you. You're the ones that are supposed to look at somebody and lift them up. You're the one that's supposed to look at somebody and encourage them. You're the one that's supposed to look at somebody and say, hey, you're doing good, aren't you? And if you're not, I'm going to pray for you, and I believe that together we can get a hold of the hand of God, and he will bring us home. This is what we each other. That's why we need not criticize each other. I'm so tired of Christians criticizing Christians. Quit talking about each other because you never know when you'll meet them. You don't want to criticize. Let someone say, well, how about right now? Let me say something. You can give someone a compliment 25 times and they'll hear it once. You can criticize somebody once and they'll hear it 25 times. <laughs> they will find out about it, all right? So your acceptance, your validation is not going to come from the world. It is going to come from the body of Christ. We need each other. Me saying that I do not need you is like my hand saying it doesn't need its elbow. Hello. I need you. These things I command that you love one another. Jesus provides at least two reasons for negative attitudes towards the world. Number one, our world towards us. First of all, they have towards us resentment. Here's what he said. If believers belong to the world, there would be no problem. However, Jesus said, you don't belong to the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, and that's why the world hates you. They got resentment towards us because we don't act like them, or at least we're not supposed to act like them. One guy came in one time and said, I don't know what the problem is with living this Christian life. I don't know why you guys have it so hard. Nobody gives me a problem. Matter of fact, they don't even know that I'm a Christian. <laughs> you get that on Tuesday, okay? <laughs> he reminds his disciples and all believers that we are called to live a different kind of life for a completely different purpose. Listen to Philippians chapter 2. Here's what he said. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Whatever you're doing, stop complaining about it. I would much rather have somebody not do it that's going to complain than somebody that can enjoy what they're doing. <laughs> Verse number 15, that you may become blameless and harmless. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Among whom, now you got to get this part. Among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that I might rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Among whom you shine as lights in the world. Pastor, what does that mean? When Christians walk in the light, we expose the darkness and the dark deeds of men. It's as if God is in you. Now, it's not word if he's not in you. You're living according to the word of God. He is in you. There is a light in you. So when you walk into a room full of darkness where junk is going on, I'm telling you, immediately they will have something against you. But here's what you have to understand. Again, it's not personal because they don't have something against you. Come here, Ramon. They don't have something against you. Here Ramon is. I'm a dark guy. I'm messed up. Ramon walks into the room where I'm at. Here, Ramon. He walks in and immediately, spiritually, you got to understand this, spiritually, immediately the light that is in him starts to open up my eyes to the darkness that I am in. So what am I going to do? Am I going to get mad at God? No. I can't beat God up. And sometimes I may not even know who God is. So I'm not mad at God. And if I'm not mad at God, I'm certainly not mad at His Son. And if I'm not mad at His Son, I'm certainly not mad at the Holy Spirit. Who am I mad at? I'm mad at the guy that I can see in front of me who is causing me to feel bad. Amen. Are 
are you? Are you listening to this? I'm trying to help you understand. There are people right now that are treating you bad, but it's not you that they don't like. It is the spirit of Christ that is on the inside of you. And the light is coming out. Now, here's what will happen. For some, we will run from the light it makes me feel bad. It's not like God's, God's trying to condemn you. It's just that the light is shining in the darkness. Yeah. I will come to a point sooner or later. This is what you need to hear, Christians. I will come to a point sooner or later where I say, man, I don't like what I'm doing anymore. I don't understand why I'm doing it. I've got to get out of this kind of light. What am I going to do? The light comes on. Wait a minute. Ramon. And I'll go back to Ramon. And I say to him, because the light has been shining out of him, I say to him, I don't know who you are, I don't know what you have, I don't understand it, but I do know this, there is something about you I have never felt before. I want what you got. Number one, number one, they do not. 
not understand God's grace, unmerited faith. That means He gives you favor and you can't earn it, you can't buy it, you don't deserve it. Who in the world could understand that? Bill, who in the world's going to understand grace? I, I didn't deserve it. I, I shouldn't have it. And you're just going to give it to me just because? How do you get that in your head? Children, how does children get that in their head? Jeremiah, did you take out the garbage? No. Jeremiah, did you feed the dog? No. Jeremiah, did you make up the bed? No. Jeremiah, did you clean the room? No. I'm going to give you a five dollar bill for that. What? <laughs> they seem to be in for that. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so they don't understand grace. They certainly don't understand forgiveness. Forgiveness? They don't understand forgiveness. Most Christians don't understand forgiveness. God, look what they've done to me. What would you like me to do? Kill them! <laughs> forgiveness? Come on, baby. As most of you know, I'm hoping all of you know that's my wife, that's why I call her baby. I just want to clear that up. Clear that up. They don't understand kindness. As Christians, we're supposed to show people kindness. I don't like what they did. I'm going to tell you something, Christian. I'm going to be real honest with you right now. I don't like everything. Can I just be honest with you? I mean, let's just get right down to brass steps, okay? And I know it's going to blow some of y'all's minds. So hang on. You need to hang on. Not everybody likes you. <laughs> Ooh, what a revelation. <laughs> some of you didn't know that. You walked around thinking everybody just loved you. I got news for you. <laughs> I got people in this building. You don't like me sometimes.